We're ready to go. We're ready. We're ready. Hi, I'm Mary McClintock. I'm the co-chair of the planning board. Do we need more fans going? Yes. Okay, there's a fan right there that um, somebody can grab that fan and get it blowing around. Can the windows open? I'll open the window. Yeah. Maybe, maybe hotter outside than it's probably cooler in here than it is outside. I have another one of those box fans. Can you pull that in? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, Andy. That or somebody white car that has my white car with the bumper stickers. I have another box fan. Okay. Um, so welcome. Is it cooler out there or warmer out there? Uh, feels cooler out there. Oh, well, I go for it. Yeah, moving here. Moving here. Moving here. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I think this was Pixie's idea. So okay, so we're going to talk about what this is about. We're going to talk about what this is about. But first, I don't know, maybe everybody knows everybody, but let's not assume that. I'm Mary McClintock. I'm on the I'm the co-chair of the planning board. I'm Joe Sergowski, planning board co-chair and chairman of the wastewater. Nelson Shipley, the senior housing. Helen Mastro, senior housing. Pixie Holbrook, senior housing. Sue Bridge, energy committee. Lee Whitcomb assessors, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> General Vanderhouse, Ambulance Director. Um, Bob Armstrong, uh, Virginal Select Board member, and <laughs> learning everything I can. <laughs> Tom Hutchison, Town Administrator. Peter Martin, Chairman of the Energy Committee. Bryce, Bryce Hereford, Solar Coach for uh, the Conway Energize Solarize Program. <laughs> Sue McFarland, Planning Board. Dave Chichester, Planning Board. And Ruth Water. And the wastewater and the town park. <laughs> Ruth Parnell, uh, guest and tech advisor on certain issues. High paid consultant. <laughs> High paid consultant. <laughs> Bob Anderson, uh, rec committee, uh, CPC committee, uh, Friends of the South River, which is not really represented. Town park. Town, town park. park. town Park. Town Park. Town Park. Town Park. Dave. <laughs> Bob Baker, Fire Chief and, and Board of Selectmen. <laughs> Bob, uh, Bob, can you represent the Highway Department tonight? Uh, <laughs> I could. Uh, yeah. Huh? I could. Would you like to call the chart of the Highway Department or, uh, or uh, you know, public safety or whatever as well? We can speak well, to public safety, I'll do highway. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jen, I'll do public safety, too. Yeah. Well, Bob can Michelle Terry, Open Space okay. Committee, Park Committee. Great, great, thanks. So this, this came from an idea that Pixie had about, wow, there's a bunch of different groups in town that each have projects that need some kind of land. And um, we're all sort of independently going off and trying to figure it out. And what if we all came together and talked about what we're looking for? Because maybe there's overlap of needs. Maybe there's ways things could fit together. Maybe there's you know something, some creative solutions we could come up with together as opposed to all of us going out. So that, and she contacted the planning board and said, hey, what about something? So the planning board talked to select board. Select board said, "Go for it," um, and this is what this is what we're doing. And so the, the point is to surface as much as we can all the projects in town that we know of and that have some need for land, um, not the 250th that wants land for a weekend, but land for permanent, um, and. Uh, and get all that information out and then as a group so that's the first part of the the first part is to get all that information out on a chart then it's snack time and then it's okay let's look at it so gee you know there's this these needs could go together these needs might not go together you know whatever then, then we could then we discuss it um, then it's what do we do next um, we're going to be out of here by nine, perhaps sooner. There's a lot of snacks, too. And I might mention snacks a few times, <laughs> just because. Would you like a snack? I don't need a snack, thank you very much. Right now, I'm going to have a snack at break time. 
Um, so, um, goals. So, looking into the future, how can we meet our needs in town? That's a big, broad goal, including the needs that are represented by all these projects. Um, gather and share information, and how can we collaborate with each other? Those are the really big, broad goals. Um, questions make sense? Is the sewer? Uh, wastewater. 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 Okay. Wastewater. Wastewater. Yeah, and I are wastewater. Right. So we have we have senior housing. We have solar. We have wastewater. We have open space. We have public safety. We have highway. What else? Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Is everyone represented? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's who's here right now tonight. We Except for the festival committee that said they wanted to come. Yeah, Kate right here. was going to be here. She's not here. Yeah, she's not here. But I, and I don't know what their long-term needs are. I don't know what they were. Thinking. Wasn't long-term. It was what just they the, they understood land <clears throat> needs as we need for the weekend on two places. They they didn't understand that. I was at, I went to their meeting. So those are the groups that I'm aware of. Are there others here or represent? Oh, so we got ways one. So. What order do we go in? So the idea is that, that Joe is going to be the scribe. We'll take a notes in the back, get it out here for us to look at. And so you can just sit in your seat and call it out. You can come stand up here and commits about how it's written, whatever you want. And we can add columns? Or and we can add columns or <laughs> split <laughs> columns. <laughs> Only 16 <laughs> variables. What's wrong here? What? What? Only 16 variables. What's wrong? <laughs> this is what we came. This is a planning board. We came up. We were talking about. Okay, let's think about what are the things that matter. And not some of these won't matter to some things, and some will matter to other things. These were the things. These were sort of the characteristics that we could think of. We would hope that we could find land that doesn't involve <laughs> agriculture or APR land or CR land. I don't know if that's going to be possible. But our, obviously, our first goal would be to see: is there land? that isn't already uh, designated to be preserved or in farming. If that doesn't work, we may have to go to the farm community and ask them what their needs are. You know, is there a piece of land that we could trade with or something if it works better for the town and they could, we could trade for a piece of farmland? We haven't gotten that far, but our goal would be to see if, what we can find without interfering with farming or conservation. Lee and then Nelson. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that Tom and I have been speaking about is, is identifying what is now productive farmland and what can be reclaimed as productive farmland. What land is appropriate to look um, at for you know future use to feed us, quite frankly, um, as, as far as sustainability is concerned, and to protect that land. And we have to balance that with our other infrastructure needs. Absolutely. So that I think we'll put farmland on, but we won't fill it in for now. We don't. Right. We'll, we and may have to talk for the farming and community. And but I think that if what is now a vacant piece of land, an unused sort of, sort of piece of land, should be, you know, run through a little a little checklist, and one of them should be, is this potentially decent farmland? Mm -hmm. And, and one of the things, what we're thinking about here right now isn't specific pieces of land, it's one of the characteristics of land we're looking mm -hmm. for. And then there will need to be another layer, and then part of the next steps, like you were talking about, like the farm, you know, like talking to farmers, one of the thoughts we've had is that after we sort of gather this information, have more information, there will be some kind of public information session to sort of continue the conversation. We wanted to start with this group with folks who were really right in the figuring out something. Does anybody have a sense of where we are with farmland? Are the farmers looking for land? Like there's this young it's farmer there, program. There, but there do seem to be young farmers coming to town who are interested. Uh, we have farmland that has become less intensively used because perhaps the family, you know, is no longer has, has farmers for kids, this type of thing. Um, and some is being reclaimed, like the Guilford farm. And the Grossman farm had only been used for pasture. Now Anna Meyer wants to get crops and so forth going there. Um, there are places like that, and we do have people coming along. And there does seem to be an interest. Conway was never prime farmland, except right along the river, but what, what we have is half decent, we ought to keep in mind. 
any committees want to go first? Could I, uh, I, I, I want to make a comment about goals. Um, <clears throat> as Pixie and I were discussing this, um, I and correct me if so I'm not speaking for both of us, but I, I think that one of our goals, or Pixie, as Pixie's goal, as we discussed this, was if possible to have the result of these meetings carry some weight so as to avoid competing interests for the same piece of land. The idea being that, you know, there may be one piece of property that's suitable for two uses. One use is more compelling, as a more immediate need, more urgency, and, you know, if the land is equally suited, you know, we want a situation where we have competing interests so that, you know, we have a battle in the town meeting floor and essentially nothing happens. We'll avoid the town meeting floor. Yeah, that's, that's a major goal so, right there. So, some, <laughs> so under goals, I would say to, you know, to, to try to avoid competing interests for various pieces of property. But of course that can't happen unless... Well, that's part of the how can we collaborate with each other. So how can we work it out? So not come to town meeting with not... That's part of, part of getting this conversation going is to not be off in our separate things, get very invested in something while somebody else goes off in their separate thing and gets invested in the same thing, and then it becomes a competition, starting sooner than later to do what to collaborate. I would hope that this would end up being a report that's either accepted by the selectmen or the town, and it would at least try to prioritize the uses of the land. The next step could be, and in a bigger town, they would create uh, zoning districts and create an industrial zone or a purely agricultural zone, and we're all, you know, basically our town is all rural agriculture, so that any use is permitted anywhere in town. So right now our zoning does not preclude competition, if you will. You could use zoning ultimately as a tool and say, okay, this is where the town sees the industrial part, so therefore the industry would get priority <coughs> in the part. I don't know if we'll get to that point where we change the zoning. Certainly, hopefully we would generate a report it would prioritize the land use. Yeah. We're in the process of updating the land use study that was done four years ago, bringing it up to current information as to what the state now owns, <coughs> and so on and so forth, what restrictions have been put on privately owned land. That's going to come into this too. And also, apparently, it, it would seem as though the state does have some, not a wish list necessarily, but they want to connect areas. They want to connect corridors of, <coughs> of wildlife and so forth and if there's some way for us to become aware of that that might be helpful can we add fish and game to this list <laughs> sure. again we don't have information sure. right but i don't know so let's so somebody right so this somebody. so bringing us back to let's get the projects out then the, and then there's going to be the then there's what we don't have prepared for tonight is what's all the what's out there in town and what's available and what could be used for what that's not really the point of tonight. I can give you that. The point and you're gonna be a key resource on that. Mm -hmm. The point of tonight is let's just surface two. everything and so that we all know. So that because, on the because right you know, now. clearly the senior housing folks know the senior housing needs. Clearly the solar folks know the solar needs. Clearly wastewater knows the wastewater needs. This is getting all together. Who mm -hmm. wants to leap up and be first? Go there. I, I caused trouble. Mm -hmm. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go there. And my, my printer pooped out on me just before I left, so I had it written here. Um, so I'm going to attempt to go in the order that they gave us and suggested. So uh, the purpose of the senior projects is to provide up to 12 single level housing units, approximately 750 per thousand square feet. Um, the size of land that we need, we think is a minimum of about two acres. So we feel that um, we'll need parking. Um, we'd like to have some community garden space. We would like to add some component of solar. It could be on a carport or it could be on roofs. Mm -hmm. But um, we have to have good access for emergency vehicles. So, but we think two acres would be our minimum. Um, the type of building, we might be looking at several duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, again, aiming at about 12 units. Um, we might have something that is a single building, but it looks like a row of buildings. You know, we could 
art, uh, aesthetically, architecturally, make it a little jagged with porches and things like that, not to make it look like a single dwelling. Um, the type of building, single floor units, but they could be bi-level if we built on sloped land. Um, and we would be important for us to have it look similar to Conway's sort of historical architecture. Location, strong preference to the center of town or near town activity, such as near the grammar school. Um, land away from the town centers can form their own community, but it's less preferred. Power lines, I'm not familiar with that, but as it would be for I would any. Put in for the solar. I'm sorry? I would put it in for solar. They need right, access. okay, that's what I thought. Well, there, there also housing needs access to it, power lines. It's right. the same as any residential. Well, you have adequate for that location, for the, for the road property location. If, if there's three phase power at the, at the phone. Right, but for other, like, but you need power. You need power, right. you know, like a park or an open space wouldn't need a power line going right. You need to have a power line going right, right. of some kind. The topography uh, has to be reasonable for access by car and by foot for seniors. We want seniors to be able to walk comfortably around this property. Um, the road access has to be very good accessibility to the road, uh, <coughs> especially with emergency vehicles of high importance. Proximity to town, to center, strongly preferred in order to attract social interaction and the ease of providing services to decrease any sense of isolation. That's really what our goal is. Um, land characteristics, open land is strongly preferred. Woods are possible but would require clearing for home sites and the preferred solar. Relatively flat, though some sloping would be accessible. Um, and again, there's plans uh, for community garden for the residents. Am I going too fast, Joe? You're right. Um, perk for 12 units. 12 units? Yeah. That's here. Well, for how many? Conceived. You're having a community room? We are thinking that's going to be less possible, Lee, okay. because it won't be income producing. We originally had thought we would have one of the spaces mm -hmm. for storage, shared storage, and the other for a community mm -hmm. senior center. But we realized that with the finances, it means the other units are going to have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So unless there's another way to do it, we're just sticking with the 12 right now. Um, forest are open, I'd already explained. Uh, public bathrooms or parking needs, parking for 12 units plus their guests. Um, the timeline, um, within five years, I guess that's sort of the magic number. And the last one was the well water, yes, for 12 units, which is under the requirements for a community well. Below the requirements? Under, yeah, below. Anything else that we missed? Um, I just used your list. Friendly so. neighbors? What's that? Friendly neighbors? Friendly neighbors, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Joe, can I, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Could you maybe, so for each committee or organization, or whatever, there's going to be some requirements that are just essential that we cannot are right, right. negotiable. We can star them or put yeah, star so maybe there. star the like this essentials. Instance, for example, access you know to star. roads for emergency vehicles and so on. There may be a perfect piece of land ten miles out of the center of town that just you know that's not really accessible to ambulance, fire. So this is so road access is yes in general. Well, that's just an example. There particular. may be other things. Yeah. I, yeah. Is there, are there some you want me to highlight? Star. Would that Star. Well, I would think, I mean, Bob, you and I have talked about emergency. Uh, yeah. Star access. access. And have river access. And Bob had talked to me at one point about some of the advantage of putting this cluster together makes it easier for emergency vehicles, but we don't want them too isolated. So that's one right there. Yeah. Star access. And the other would be perfect, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, we just mm -hmm. have to. Yeah. That's can't like, do it can't do it without that. Right. Right. It, we were we went out to visit one of the um, sewage treatment wastewater treatment facilities, and they were washing things. I said, "You need water?" He said, "Yes, we do." <laughs> I had never thought that you need water at a wastewater treatment. Right, but you need clean water to clean the filters. 
at a, like a, at a leech field. Again, yeah. yeah, just like at a leech field situation. Yeah. Tom? I was going to talk about highway maybe. Sure. Okay. Are we done? Anybody? Anything else in senior housing for they want to understand about senior housing? Did we, did we put anything in about sharing, or is that we're not going to worry about? We're, we're going we'll to get to that, that later. later. That's the next phase. All right. So highways. These might be helpful to that later. All right. Uh, sure. All right. Garage. Is this highway in the garage? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, but I do have some garage. Garage, and, and that would also include, as the current site does now, space for materials um, that's outside as well. So, uh, uh, something of a complex. Town drive committee, and it's a town garage. So, if there's land that's associated with it that's, that's not built, it is also necessary for storing materials, gravel. So do you have a sense of number of acres of overall land and then footprint on that, like for building? I think the overall is four to five acres and the, and the footprint is like something like an acre. Can I ask, is it still the site that we voted down? Well, that's, we, we have a, a, a good site design for that. Um, so that's, that is building, building you said was one acre of building? Yeah, and that includes road, you know, um, road, pavement, driveway sort of thing. Um, there would be, a, it, let's just put down what, what the, the last vision was for now, right. which is two buildings, um, a one small and heated one, or not smaller, I think it's, uh, what was it? Uh, Three bay, sort of? Or bigger two? It was a, it was we, a, we can extract that. The, the first building was a two, two bay, deep service base mm -hmm. with an area to the right or left there for office space. Office, bedroom, break room, bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. So in the next five years, if we plan to somehow go back to town meeting with the same size. Um, Is that Five years would be great. It depends on how much people put in the stabilization. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're saying this is like a five-year look ahead. Five well, we years. originally, yeah. Joe, you were with us when we originally bought the Chester property. Yeah. We bought four acres, thinking that was going to be more than adequate enough space for highway. Right. Somehow we get away from it. <laughs> I still don't know how to that. But. And that, that, to me, is the perfect site. You don't want something up near the highway that everybody's going to look at. Where is it, though? It's right behind the grammar Where they want to put the solar panels. Gotcha. Where they want to put the solar panels. It was a piece of property that was, everybody was in favor of at the time we purchased it because it was accessible, it was fairly easy, it was near the power lines, it was more than adequate enough space, and you couldn't see it from Route 116. Because it's just all over the other the side of the, the uh, stone wall. We wouldn't see it. The only thing you would see from 116 is coming up around what we used to call it, every point in the corner of Matthews Road, you know, probably would see the roof right? up there that's next to the tree line. The only thing you'd see. And I'm going to put existing site behind the salt chip with a question mark. Yeah. And that's good. It, because it, the site that they want now, they haven't got much room to, that they want to put the bill up. They put the bill up, they haven't got. <laughs> Well, why did they get away from that site? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Well, I mean, Anybody part knows? of my understanding, and this is going off of that topic, <laughs> part of my understanding about the reason that we bought the Leshevsky property was that the site behind the salt shed was not a possibility because of the location of the public well at the south end of the right. um, ice pond. And then at some point, some somehow there was some different understanding of what the protection you know radiuses were and it was became apparent that we could put something there i don't know why first engineer the building uh, construction engineer firm we hired he gave he slid in there uh, outrageous what we felt that they felt the time 
outrageous site preparation cost for the four acre lot. Oh, Lashevsky property. Right. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't comparing that with any other site anywhere else for site construction cost. Okay. So he came with like a three, three, over three hundred thousand dollars site preparation. And back then, uh, that was a lot of money in there. Everybody kind of, uh, well, maybe we should think about moving it somewhere else. So now, the last proposal is up, everybody knows what the last proposal is. It's up in the open field. It's right by the south shed. I have no idea what the site cost is up there, because they're going to do blasting and everything else up there. That's so, all legend. OK, so let's go back to going through what things are needed for the garage in general, but this is the kind of information that will be useful as we get into that what properties could share or whether the pieces that work. So what would you say slow? 5% maximum for the Ruth. highway garage? Ruth? Ruth, I'm sorry. Uh, it would depend. 5% 5%. It would have to be... I'm thinking of the site. It would have to be there. scraped because the pavement probably can't be more than 3%. And obviously, the building floor needs to be level. So 5% would be maximum. Road access is really essential. Oh, they can build their own roads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I, I've been going to, well, going to a lot of things. My, my son lives in Westford. They put their highway garage on the top of the mountain. There's, a, I would say, a half a mile long road, at least 10 degrees, if not 15. And the whole highway department is open. I went to a granddaughter's a baseball game in Med Meredith, Connecticut. You drive up a mile long road up to, to the top of a the mountain, they flattened the whole top of the mountain off, and they've got five baseball fields in there. But I think these are towns that are desperate for space. They you know the, so they just we need a ballpark, so let's just take and scrape the mountain top flat. We, we would probably not consider doing that, but that's what other towns are doing. Deeper is okay, but it takes engineering money. Right. Yeah. So, road so yes, uh, yes, road access. I'll say no um, to proximity to center, even though there may be ancillary land needs. If, if it's in one end of town, you may want some other highway space at another end of town where you have some materials that are available. So I guess it's uh, open preferred, low slope. Huh? Yeah. For uh, for major building purposes, um, and and uh, for perk, yes, uh, it will be there will be bathrooms. Um, it will be a fully functioning uh, building in that sense. Uh, just so people are that clear, will be the, for what six seven employees? The, there will also be um, call it five or six five. now. Oh, okay. um, we're talking five years out. With six. The clerk. Yeah. And, you know, um, just so people know, there is there in the plans there is included a tight tank for any of the runoff from the vehicles. That's not that headed into the ground. I guess this is that's way, um, stormwater storage. Yeah. Is that stormwater or for the wash bays? Wash bay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Water, <laughs> uh, so open I think there is a stormwater issue too, right? Um, what the run what to do with the run Yeah. Forest, open open uh open. and yes parking, uh both for employees and contractors, visitors, etc. Um also on the outside of the timeline, five years if finances of Conway allow money to be put into the stabilization fund mm -hmm. at the rate that I would recommend. I guess you mm -hmm. put the well, right? We'll see. Definitely need a well. And uh, just a note for when you talk about public safety needs, the current site probably won't work for a new facility. You'll need more land and different land than what we currently have available <coughs> for the public safety part of the garage. Shall we uh, segue right to public safety? Safety? Anybody want to do that? Sure. Go ahead. Go for it. Who's going to do it? Public oh, safety. Me and gentlemen can do it. You and gentlemen. 
What, what, what do we need? We're talking fire ambulance and police. Fire ambulance and police. Department. Well, the ambulance, the fire, the fire can either be, it's got to be either four bay or two D bays. Okay. Should we separate? Would it be helpful the for ambulance, to separate out like we probably police should. needs, fire we, needs? We probably should. Okay, yes. so why don't you do okay, fire? I'll do the fire and start with. Yeah. We need fire. either two D bays for stackable trucks or you need four single bays. Okay. So it's four bays? Yeah. You need uh, uh, at least two office space areas. Two what? Two office space. Office, office space, space areas. You need a general purpose room or a good sized meeting room for training. Training room, that's what you want to call it. Okay. Uh, Did you get that? And storage space. Plus two offices, plus, plus two rooms, and, and, plus and storage. Plus a uh, uh, sizable amount of storage. Uh, you originally said eight bays, I thought. That was for that the was combined, for fire the combined fire. fire. Now this is fire. Okay. This is fire. Would we really consider three separate buildings, or is it ultimately going to all be one? Or you I think it, in, in the modern technology with solar and all this stuff, you're crazy if you don't put all three in one building. So we'll, we'll try to do all three here and then. Yeah. And I think it'd be crazy to do I mean. Right. But it'd be good to know the specific information about, like, what, you know. I, I'm not going to give you Kenny's demands, all that he needs. I know he needs two, police needs two bays. But let's go. Keep going with fire for now. Okay, I'll go to kitchen. One. Uh, What's that? you need a kitchen as well? Yes. You, you can get away with that. No, we really don't have a kitchen. You should have a, uh, in, a minimal amount. Do, do you have a sense of size of land? Size of land, the biggest problem you have with, with the fire and any public safety is parking. No, fire alone, alone, you've got to have a space for at least 20 vehicles to park. Outside. 20, 20 parking spaces. And turn around, right? And turn around the space. And turn around the space. So do you have a sense of acreage? I do not. I Anybody guess, guess what that kind of building and that acreage? Two to four acres. Two to four? Maximum. Two to four, four acres. Maximum. Right together in two to three. I, again, it gives how much space the building takes. You know? right. um, I mean, how, how big is the building square feet, you think? Five thousand. What's the one there now? Four bays. Look, two uh, Tom, do you know the square <laughs> Tom, do you know the square footage of the current building? Tom, do you know the square footage of the existing high garage and fire station? You could probably use all that space, right? And you're right. upstairs and downstairs. It's probably 4,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. That size building something now would be perfect for a fire station. Is that big? Strictly five. Strictly five. Strictly five. Why don't we say two? Why don't we say, we'll say 4,000. Okay. And um, power lines for sure. Yep. Location needs to be in the center? It's, got, it's mandatory it's got to be in the center town. Or you're going to kill response time right to death. And we can't have that. We have to try to keep our response time at the very minimal at all costs. Okay. Road access is obviously. Oh, just commercial. Because the majority of your, your, your firemen and EMTs live near the center or in the center of town. And what about um, road access for sure? Um, land characteristics, there's slope, it's gotta be not too steep. Mm -hmm. Right, not steep at all off the town road. Uh, Almost flat off the town. Okay. And Especially in the winter months if, if they go out in the middle of a storm or something where highway hasn't been out yet and you got an incline they can't get out the station, you're done for. You need a wash base? Not necessarily. Wash base, yes, if it, 
Uh, yeah, I put a question mark on wash bay because you could use the highway one okay. if the highway had a wash bay. And what about perking? How many perks? We need water. Need water. Need water. And uh, call two bathrooms probably. Two bathrooms. And plus the kitchen. Plus the small kitchen. <laughs> Or you could use a multi-level piece of property mm -hmm. where you could put your storage down underneath, but then you're adding a lot to the cost of uh, Nelson construction trading. You're, you're adding a lot of cost to the building if you're going to put a storage space under, especially when you got heavy freighted trucks up there. You should, you should be, this building should be on a slab. On a slab. Okay. So yeah, that could be on a, on a slab. Right, right. you don't want a, you don't want a thing to fall through. They do have, they do have multi-level fire stations, but the, the concrete slab that separates the floor is going to be tremendous. Usually expensive. Timeline, yesterday? <laughs> Is that right? What? Minus 10. What? Minus, Minus 10. 10. Minus 10. <laughs> okay. All right. What, what if, Convert that to Roman time. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, so my, minus, minus 10? 10? Yeah. Okay. Um, police? Are we going to guess or are we going to. What's police? I would say that he needs a minimum of two base. Is there any. Does the police have any. They have the office space. Do they, they have, have any? Space and, that's it. and where do the vehicles live? Mm -hmm. Where's the other vehicles? We've got eight police vehicles. Eight police vehicles, right? It's in the chief. But we also have the trailer that has the they have four wheeler and so forth on it. Trailer with four wheels at Kenny's house. They have sign boards that are, are rammed in down the Fournier's property, uh, the Grand School property. So you need a base for that stuff. At least storage. Days, office and storage, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Size of the land. Probably minimum of two office space. I have two, two offices, I'm guessing. Not a, a very big, area. But not a very big footprint, right? In terms of land. No, Probably not. a quarter acre. Yeah. A quarter acre. Half acre so we're going half acre. Half acre. Minimum zoning. Minimum zoning. Residential. Half acre. Half acre. You got to change zoning for that. Half acre. And so that's why you got special permits. Does, and that also needs to be town center? He's going to want a couple it's, parking places for visitors. Too, it it should be. I think you need a whole It park. should be centrally located. Yeah. I would think. Prefer. So how, how big are we talking? A thousand? Fifteen hundred square feet? Fifteen hundred? Probably fifteen hundred, yeah. <coughs> well, when you say centrally located... For a place? Work, uh, I'm sorry, for, for fire. Um, where you are now, is that, is, that, that, is that considered centrally located? That is considered the part of the center of town. Bob and Nate were looking at doing the, this change back in the mid-80s. Your response at that point is that it had to be located within a five mile radius of the center of town to keep your response to it a right. reasonable amount. But um, so the further out you go, the, the Right, and the other piece you've got is response from the, the, the call force because mm -hmm. that might be some good numbers to know just how far everybody's traveling well, to get you in. You have so. to look at the, your, your, your. We have firemen who live all over the town center. But the ones that are out in the outlying district, I would call, don't ever come in to get the truck trucks to go to the station. They don't want to be at site. They meet you at site. So you can't rely on them as their first response. Um, perk is uh, like for a few people, not a lot. Probably six, yeah. six to ten people. Probably. Six to ten. It's going to be a matter of what you do. The smallest septic they're going to let you put in is going to be a 1,500 gallon tank. Yeah. Okay. I'll each field accommodate that size. Minimum. So minimum. Okay, so minimum. So, Bob, the, I, so you, the, the, then what would be the, if not in the center of town, as curly as what would be the radius, the maximum oh, radius well, from the center of town that would be suitable for the fire station? Mm -hmm. Well, the again, 
they had talked to us before about maybe possibly looking into button down on, on the liquor school property down behind the corner. The subject that's way out of the center of town. They were still response time by three to five minutes. It's too far away. Because these people are going to drive all the way down there and it's on one end of the, of the town. And then because 99 percent of your calls, probably 95 percent of your calls are not in that neighborhood. You know what I mean? What is that? A mile then? That's about a mile down there. So the maximum would be a half a mile. I would I would say probably no more than half a mile. From the center of town for the fire truck. Right. And then how about for police? I don't know about that. You have to tell the county about that. Right? The school is 1.6 miles from the center. My house is two miles. Have you? Um, another thing to consider with police or fire and ambulance, especially, is the access from you know different parts of town. Like if it was at the grammar school, if there's a tree across 116, we have to go. Most of us that live in the center of town would have to go all the way out around Graves Road to come back up to be able to get in there. So. You have to, I mean, you want to have it near a nuclear store, a lot of intersecting roads. Right. I mean, so where it is now, there's a few different options of ways to get to it if necessary. You know, crap hits the fan and you can't, mm -hmm. different roads are blocked, which has happened. Um, you know, having different options of ways to get to it and the responders to get to it is something that needs to be considered as well. Okay. Anything more on police, or should we move to ambulance? Let's go to ambulance. Ambulance, go for it. Yeah. Ambulance, come on. Um, ambulance needs one bay and an office area. I would say one office space would be fine in a fairly decent sized storage area. Right now we have a lot of stuff stored in various different places, stuff in corners and under tables and under desks and anywhere and everywhere. Um, thousand square feet. Probably no more than a thousand square feet. Yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. And um, town center again. Yeah. All three of these town centers. Um, yeah. <coughs> Flat. This probably center maybe not important, but no, fairly important. Mm -hmm. Especially considering weather related right. stuff. People don't get sick on clear sunny days. They don't do that yet. So <laughs> if there's a storm, they'll get sick. <laughs> Great. Uh, we don't have a snow plow on the ambulance, so <clears throat> yeah. Um, flat. Perk for how many? Did we say? Parks yes. The center is yes. Right? Yes. Again, is that a within a half mile kind of thing, like fire? I would say so. Yeah. And perk for a few, minimum. or the minimal, the minimum, sure. right, the minimum yeah. they heard. Okay. Open. How many um, parking spaces do you need? I would say a minimum of three, just to cover the crew that usually goes on call. Okay. Obviously, more if we're having meetings or okay. training, anything like that. So. Timeline. How many? Nice how many day. people would you like to respond to a call? How many cars would you want to be able to park? We need a minimum to transport, so it would have to be at least two parking spaces. But I would prefer, you know, half a dozen. And um, timeline. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. <laughs> okay. Gemma can tell you this, but in the yearly, she has a yearly inspection for the state of Massachusetts. When the guy comes up, what's the facility that right now is parked in there else? And he writes them up every year. As for violations? A violation for, for the building itself. Not the animals. For the building itself. And the reason they don't push it is because they know that if they push it, they put the county animals out of business. Wow. So what do they say is, is exactly? 
what they say is they want, if she's going to be in a multiple uh, building like in with fire and police, that she should have her own separate bay. Enclosed separate bay area. Basically, the, the biggest thing is that we don't have any kind of sterile storage mm -hmm. or even particularly clean storage. Um, <laughs> and, you know, every, everything on the ambulance is is sterilely packaged, but we don't, the storage space that we have is not conducive to, it's, it's not what people expect when they call an ambulance. Um, the ambulance itself is is spotless, is immaculate. The, the garage and the bay, it needs work. It needs, I mean, the bottom line is that the entire building needs work for everybody. We just happen to get a little bit more publicity from the state every two years on the building and it's uh, disrepair. We got what? Um, so wastewater and um, solar and park, park, parks park. and open space. Who so wants solar to leave in? Solar? No, well, what's else is done? Solar? What? Right. 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 I think rain? it's good, good to go solar right now. Um, it's going to take too long to power that up. Uh, just right. oh, let's do wastewater. Dave, you want to do wastewater? Here in the barrel. No, no, I guess. <laughs> the okay. So the project is two. Um, two locations. Two, um, two community wastewater leach treatment plants. Right? Well, it's like a community leach field version of wastewater treatment plant, not the thing that fits next to the river and south here. Not that one, but the leach field. Um, I think we said two acres. Two acres each. for the size of the land. So each. Two times two. Right. Dave, what's the each? The upper part of the town of Main Street? And the each north? side of the river. Each, each, each side, side of the river. Okay. To, to pump it over the river would be... I gotcha. Okay. There is no, buildings are no significant building per se, uh, but there, there are some small... Yeah, if we're going to treat the water, there is a small... There's small outbuildings. And probably a storage, small storage area. That it's about the one that we saw it was probably twelve by twelve, a little single mm -hmm. lot building. That that uh, we were in Grammy. They actually have a groundwater discharge permit, so they have to do a lot more testing than we're proposing. So ours might be a little small. Basically, to wash the filters, I guess. And there's some recording equipment. You can wash their hands now and then to eat lunch. I'm going to say 500 <laughs> square feet. Oh, they were close to they, lunch. They, they literally wear gloves to have their lunch. Yeah. They work without gloves. Then when they're going to eat, they put their gloves on. Joe, is it better if it's, if it's, <laughs> it's, it's, better it's downstream? <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't use the river at all. Because oh. it's got, it's pump, it's... It's going to be subsurface ground. discharge into the ground, just like the like leach field. But you'll have to pump. But every, anybody tied into it would have a tank with a pump that would pump to the place. These would be roughly 15,000. You prefer to grab these feet, right? Yes, it's all downhill. The, the leach field is 15,000 oh, square feet, each one. 15? For 10,000 for 10, gallons per day, which is a third of an acre of not, not a very so big leaching pit. Four acres? Uh, location? Closer to? Close to the source. <laughs> not Deerfield. Not Deerfield. Close to source. Source of what? Well, it does cost money to yeah. push it down. Push it down. Is there power lines? There needs to be a well, so there would need to be power lines, right? Yeah, power lines. It's just a commercial. And then, so then, because there needs to be a well for, for water to clean the filters. Or a big truck, right? So, this guy's to be mild slow. Truck water. Uh, road access, minimal. Proximity. Uh, you have to be able to get in, you know, once a month to treat it. So, can we call it a driveway? Mm -hmm. yeah. Driveway, yeah. yeah. Proximity to center. Yeah. yeah. That's where the source is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the source. 
Um, when characterization it needs to be flat, no one. Uh oh. Flat, no one. You can't, there's two, you, you have to put the leach field the first time in virgin soil. So if you have a steep slope, you're talk, you can't cut it and fill it. It has to be all cut. So if you want to go into a bank, you know, 100 feet, you've got to. You have to start here and cut 100 feet in. You can't take the dirt from here and put it over here. It has to be on undisturbed dirt. Dirt, okay. how many? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, That's the whole said, point is perfect. We said 30 homes, right? Yep. For a system. Okay. Each. Each, yeah. That's at 60. And there doesn't need to be a bathroom there, does there? <laughs> no. 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 And there doesn't really need to be parking except to, like, except no, just park in the driveway. Okay. And uh, open. Got it. Well, there can, it can be some forest, but it actually it has to be open, I guess. <laughs> and timeline. What's your timeline? Three years. And a well, yes. Yeah. Could be shared. Yeah, I'm curious about the three years. Is, how do you? Is there is there some urgency or I mean, I, what's the issue with timing on this? Forty-year-old septic. There's some urgency. <laughs> it started out about economic development, but I think it's more about potential for failing systems and contamination of our water supply. So we'll, if we lose our water supply, then we have to go and find town wells and. Bring water into town. And so where are we with that right now? When you're saying three years, is it like a map? Is this a, is this a, should this be a real priority or is this? Uh, I think realistically it's going to take us three years to get funding and do the project. Yeah, that's a reasonable timeline. In terms of when should it be done? Is, is there a need for it today? Probably not this afternoon, but, but there are some systems that are getting close to failure downtown. People and are the playing. options that they have are quite limited. The people are spending thirty to forty thousand dollars putting in. But we're not in danger of being out of compliance with any DP laws or um, close. any of the well, there there is on a basis. Yeah. In the village center, we're, there running, is. Yeah. we're running serious risks about spacing between uh, wells, and septics, and so on and so forth. Houses in the downtown the area, even now, don't drink their own water. Including the town on the school. Or the wells have been salted. We don't drink the water here. There's wretched, wretched stuff. We don't drink the water here. If the water here tests fine, but it's just very discolored. But it does test fine. Okay. Um, yeah, it the it certainly built, belongs in the five year plan, which is what we're talking about here. Whether it's three years. Um, so, anything else about wastewater? That's it. Space. Open space parks, because we have left open space parks and um, solar. Is that correct? Is there anything? I, mean, I got another little project. Okay. So. What's go next? Open space. Parks. Well, open space doesn't parks. exactly have a project. You know, we just want to make sure that. Um, so you're not actively looking to, for for space not in the town. next five years. Not town space. Mm -hmm. right. So just um, more. It's more about preserving or or monitoring what's done. Okay. And I think it, what I was going to say is it dovetails a lot with fish and game or park. Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you, it's not a project. Okay. Okay. But park, we could try to piece. <coughs> I think one thing is. So we're going to do parks. Yeah, we do, do the river. Do the, the river park. park. Rose property park. Okay. All right. So we'll do the. What we like. We don't want to call it the Rose Park anymore. We would like to call it the Town Park, Town River Park, River Town Park. And the size of the land is really sort of 
what's available, what's available. after right. everything else or in combination. It, does, it isn't all mutually exclusive, is I think our thinking. But like if, this, if some park is possible on top of a septic field, for instance, yeah, but there's a, you you, you want to have a certain amount of open space for the sake of aesthetics and so oh, I yeah. I would think there's a philosophy there. Yeah. No matter what you put down there on the town river park, that's what we call it. Whether it be one on this type scenarios, whether it be senior housing, whether it be senior housing and emergency services, or whatever it might be, a combination thereof. I think when the whole thing was said and done, you'd have a nice area for parks, I would think. Oh, yeah. Left there. Yeah. That piece of mm -hmm. yeah, because it's going to be an area that can't be built. Can't be built on. Right. right. So that so whole wetland there. 200 foot. Right. How many acres is down there? Ten. 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 So the size that's needed is variable. It's variable, but I think you'd want a minimum. Oh, yeah. What's the minimum? Uh, maybe three acres. I'll get 12. 12 three yeah. acres. Five, OK. Five, five acres. Five. Three, three to five. Three, three to five. five. Okay. Three to five. Okay. Okay. Five acres is the whole village center. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a long field, but can, I mean, the whole bottom of that field? How big is that whole part? So this is, this is a project well, that right now. Well, ten, ten, I guess. Ten. Ten. Yeah. This is a project that right now, you're not thinking about wanting generally a three to five acre park in town. You're thinking about that particular piece of property. Is that true? Yeah. Or are you yeah. thinking also about a three to five acre park? That's where the focus was, was to use that piece of property. Okay, so yeah. this is tied to that piece of property. And it should right. well because of yeah. location yeah. Right. and mm -hmm. the other characteristics that we're talking about here. River is, there any, is there anything else about this, about these criteria that that are worth noting in talking well, about? parking. Parking. Yeah. We discussed having parking. Are you repairing yeah. any buildings? Yeah. A gazebo? Yes. There's also but, but low impact, like not Bandbox. permanent structures. Horseshoe boxes. Yeah. We've also talked about saving the shed, right? Yes. Um, yeah. No need for a well, is that correct? Yeah, right. Probably not. No, but if there's a well there and we had a community right. garden there, we, we could, that right. would be useful. That way people right. wouldn't have to carry buckets of water. Maybe, right? yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Does this need to be close to the center? Are, David, were you at the meeting when they talked about the alluvial mythology thing? There, there was a proposal in their report to put a, a park just above oh. the covered bridge. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about that, yeah. OK, so that's so another, another possible two parks, area. Yeah. Okay. That'll be an additional park. There's a, there's a question I think we could ask of the Town River Park people that none of the other committees need, and that would be, what use of this park do you envision? Are you? Are we talking about ball fields no. or that's, nature that's walks? Passive. But anyway, passive recreation. Passive recreation. Walking, okay. river access. And we envision it to be kind of partially uh, natural habitat uh, and maybe some lawns for horseshoes and uh, picnics Minimal and things area. like that. Okay. But no ball fields. Okay. okay. Lighting? Yeah, it's it's probably not. It's a, it's a rustic park concept. Yes, right. rustic, rustic park. park. Okay. Oh, Wi-Fi would be good. Because <laughs> 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 we wouldn't want to just be outside and just be outside. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We want to have a screen in front of us. Well, Christ, you're going to have Wi-Fi everywhere. Okay. Of course. Do you need an access road? No, just a driveway. Yes, to the parking. Well, just to parking. Right way to parking. Proximity center, yes. Pretty flat. But it could be. And it doesn't need to, doesn't need to park. There's not going to be a bathroom. No need to have one one that doesn't need to No park. Yeah. All right. That's already coming. And that could be either Doris Gerald's thing. Some mix. How about mix? Um, Probably a portal potty. How much parking do you envision? I think we're talking 12. 12. Is that right, Michelle? Somewhere around 12 to 15. 
Okay. Timeline. Timeline. One over. And everything else is done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Joe, uh, did, did you list the shed under building? There's a shed keep, there now. Keep the shed, we have. I put gazebo. Oh, there's a shed. All you know, the you know the shed that Greg Rose built. We'd, we'd like to maybe use that as kind of an office. Yeah. What was so? This is Parks One. Parks One. Okay. Parks Two. Okay, we got Parks Two. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this idea I first heard about from uh, from Mark Davis, who lives along the river. Uh, and this is if you're going on the Ashfield Road. There's a the, the millstone, the Conway millstone is on the side there. Mark goes across from it. And Mark told me one day, he said, boy, if I won the lottery, I'd build a park from the millstone to the covered bridge. Said, That's a beautiful area. That's lovely, yeah. It's just full of poison ivy and junk. You can't get in there, you know? <laughs> Not so, for a park. Uh, Nick, Does anybody is... know how the town acquired that land? Tell us no. the story. No, tell the story. Which piece? Uh, the public Anderson. Anderson. So the, you mean Anderson. the, the torch uh, Jan Robinson, Robinson donated that to yeah. the town of Conway mm -hmm. for a future town park. Really? Okay. There you go. Uh, back in the early 70s. Uh, uh, and her and her husband lived on the house on the uh, roof. Uh, 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 How about that? Which parcel are we talking about? Because the town also bought the lot that got disappeared when the river moved. I thought that was Anderson. <laughs> I don't know Right where the Robinson is, we sold the town a piece at a ridiculously low price, or gave a piece. Somewhere below the covered bridge, you're talking about. Above the bridge? Just above the bridge. Between the bridge and the 116, up 3rd Mike's. Okay, so the bridge and towards Ashfield? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and may, maybe all of, there's a there's a there's a little remnant of a dam above the bridge, yeah. maybe from there to somewhere around the millstone, or maybe right. like further. Right. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's so name it above covered bridge, Westfield Bridge. <laughs> so I, I, I heard about this idea the second time from Nick Mill, the fluvial geologist, who, who has mapped out the river and has identified uh, all kinds of problem areas and projects. Some of them, uh, three or four of them, have been realized already. And, and, uh, and just to, uh, she envisioned the river walk with picnic tables and stuff on it and things like that. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about Nick Miller right now. Mm -hmm. um, the fluvial geologist, it, the, 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 you know, it, it may be not apparent to everybody, it wasn't apparent to me, but the river has been degraded over the years from mills and so forth. It's been straightened. It's, it's, you know, it's really been, it's been used as a sewer. So, you know, this is the first time we've ever thought about uh, taking care of it. So, uh, you know, one of one of the, one of the, this is a this is a simple example of it, of that kind of thinking. They, they built some retaining new retaining walls along the river and towards Ashfield. And if you look at those retaining walls, you'll see. And you know, here's the wall, walls like this, and there and there's a there's a there there are little there are rocks and things that point this way. And what that does. Is, is when the water comes along and it wants to it wants to smash the wall, the rock will turn it away from the wall. So it, it helps the wall and it also helps the river. It makes for more diverse uh, pockets for wildlife and whatnot. So uh, I, I believe in these guys. Uh, the, this the, the company is uh, John Field uh, Company. You know, they're finally going to finally going to get this project. Uh, below the center of town, along the, along the former Rose Field, it's finally going to happen. The permitting has been a nightmare for it, but we finally got. You know, it's going to it's going to go off this August. Is that right, Michelle? I think I think he had a kickoff meeting yesterday. Oh, I don't know. So anyway, uh, the second idea that Nick has, you, you take this, you take this. Uh, this town land, you and you, you you put in some of these weirs and whatnot to, to improve the river. In particular, there's a, there's a brook that comes down that, that is a prime holding spot for fish. And if you, if you put in the right structures, you deepen it, make it better. Uh, and then I, and then he's also saying, then you put you put a trail loop around there. You put some parking spaces in near the near the. Uh, uh, the, the mill wheel, and uh, it's pretty simple. You know, it's it's a it's a path. Parking spaces. There'd be a whole lot of work 
uh, cutting the grass and getting rid of some of the invasive species and whatnot. The per I, I don't remember the, the whole proposal, but I, I know he had, had $70,000 down for permitting. The permitting is going to be a nightmare. But that's just the way the state is. Uh, I think yeah. he also had a, a fish platform uh, up, up near the dam somewhere, and that, I suspect that would be accessible. Uh, that would be wheelchair accessible. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Maybe we could do so, some of that. Okay. All right, so yeah. that's another site specific place. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's great, but, and look, I want to, we're at a it's point. Not competing. What? It's not competing. It's not competing for any other. I'm competing for anything, I know. <laughs> yeah. Good, we'll give that one an A. <laughs> Ruth, I, I, what I already need to add for this particular project is investigate neighbor relations. As in, um, the ones who didn't want the other neighbors. So, want. Yes, there are people who said over my dead body. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this this park, a park, not quite like this, but a park has been proposed at least twice before that I've worked on. In that location or yes. in general? Same location. Oh. At neighbor relations. Neighbors, neighbors don't sure. want so people from out of town uh, hanging around that neighborhood. Okay. Um, <laughs> so parks, um, solar. <laughs> Else? You fire your stuff, I'll go through the charts Good. for them. Good. Anybody want to speak to solar building? I mean to municipal buildings? Are we municipal all set with building? converting this building? Oh, please, please I think it's, it's Let's uh, do solar now. It has been in the past, but I could you know, for the more like people I even came in that they, they feel they could solve that <laughs> by renovating the building. existing building. Didn't hear. So solar, let's go for solar now. We're doing good on time and well on time. I, I'm not well. an editor. And, uh, project. <laughs> it's almost snack time. Project, uh, which project is that? Solar. Or this okay. is, well, this has yet to be decided. We're looking for location, the size that we've got to be working right now. Mixed use? Um, yeah, 250 kilowatt uh, array is that? what we're looking at. Half acre. Half acre. 250 kilowatt. And, and the goal for this is it would produce all the electricity that the town consumes. It's town municipal. plus the school. The, town, the municipal. The town. town buildings and the school. Indeed. All, all the municipal okay, properties. So, so municipal and school. No, no buildings, I assume. No, no buildings. But there's structures. No, no structures. No. Is well, this different from the community uh, concept? That, so all of this is yet to be fleshed out because the way the, the regulations and the way it's set up in the state right now, community solar is not investment attractive. So until they make some adjustments in how things are paid, that really is not a, a consideration. So this is solar power for the town use, for the right. municipal use? Right now. Okay. Yes. It seemed to be the, the, a project that we could probably get off that is workable, it's going to benefit everybody in the community not just people who can get so because it's going to be reflected in your um right now we're spending about fifty thousand a year on electricity for the town uh, slope topography not really important mild access yes proximity to center no it needs to have some visibility to the south i guess huh? well i thought right. we'd get with that with forest and open okay yeah. Open, open, it needs to be open space. to the south. Land characteristics, all right, say uh, south facing, preferable. The next one. Can it be hilly? South facing. Sloping. The, the flatter, the, again, the development costs make a big difference on how, what the payback and how economically feasible it is. So the, the easier the site is to develop, mm -hmm. uh, the easier it's going to get a vendor to come in and. No perk. Um, no bathroom. I'd two say years. Two years. No well. You were going to show us the, the work that we got to put. We got to uh, agree on the state. We just got a report back from the people that are doing the investigation. And this is the site that we proposed at town meeting where the, we asked the planning board to put in to make it as uh, 
part of the one of the sites by right. Unfortunately, the, the five sites that were picked when we applied for the Green Communities Grant, uh, of the five, there was only one that was going to work uh, without extensive uh, cutting of forest or, or just not correct because two parts of the lines and the Rose property was the one that did it. And, and as a committee, we looked and said, we've already got people looking real hard for that piece of property. So when we went up and looked at the site behind the, the salt shed, which is a, a site by right. Behind the salt shed or behind, behind the school? salt shed? Uh, and this will show. This, this parcel. Well, the parcel. This parcel is a parcel that oh. is designated solar by right. It, the topography up there is New England. It, it's there is isn't a, a hundred square yards of flat up there any place. We looked at the map, we looked at this parcel. When we were looking at lots, we saw this thing and walked out there and said, wow, did we find our spot? When I went to town and found out what this parcel is about, found out it is town property, is why we asked to have this looked at. At town meeting, what came up was there's some other uh, information we didn't have as possible expansion of the school, which is here. Now here's your classroom. Well, <laughs> the yellow area. Ahead there's here. your classroom. So if we doubled that size, we'd be about out to here. The other thing, and I think Bob had mentioned this, that there's a possible need to have space for expansion of the uh, septic. This block represents a leach field that is twice as big as the one that the school has right now. So, I don't know if you can get that down a little bit, Bryce, you see the... What? Move it okay. No, this, there you this, can this represents the so. solar field. So, this, this is the parcel, this is the half acre. Where's the uh, solar field that those... Uh, it's hard oh, to see those yeah. That would be these yeah, lines right here, yeah. where Mary's yeah. hand is. Possible to shift that back some, but as we go back, there's a little bit more shading from the west side here that we're trying to avoid. Okay. We took a certainly be possible to do some trimming there, but any of these to look at trying to eliminate any removal right. of, of so vegetation. You, yeah. So you can yeah. see it can be moved back farther. And the um, septic for the school yeah. can be accommodated as well. Yeah, they right. put that spot in there, so we've got no competition for, for that. These okay. would be pedestal okay. mounts, very so like similar that. to what they're looking here. Um, Someone goes in there twice a year and mows. Where's Town Garage in relationship? Town Garage is there. Town well, Garage is sitting up, this is where it would have been, or where it would go. And the other thing is, one of the things that I hope people understand is, the town spent a quarter of a million dollars on the study and the preference for that Town Garage. The work that those fellows did, put it where it is, because when they investigated lots up there, every other place up there had some difficulties. And if you go back into those reports, you'll see why uh, groundwater, ledge, um, any number of things. Why do they move it? Have you taken into consideration that soil location? Or have you heard about the right of way that goes through that property? No yep. problem. There's plenty of room for it to, to slide through. Yeah. Because yeah. it looks yep. to me. We go back to the. It would be the, the right of way. It looks to me. Like the right of way that goes. It's already defined. Yeah. It's through here. Yeah, it's Bob. It's to fine. this. Right. To doesn't the touch on it. Gary Lachowski's land. No, it does. Isn't this the two? Isn't this the? This is the two. This is the two-acre wooded piece, correct? Yes. Yes. His right away goes through here and goes like this up there. That's no right problem. Job? We've got. So negotiate. We, we, we have. Exactly. We have more than enough. Yeah, more than enough clearance. Sorry. I wouldn't say keep the four. Yeah. The and unless he thing. wants to build a four-lane highway for his access. The curious um, thing. No. I mean, no. no we, aware we, aware yeah. We we were aware that that. The curious was there. thing we found is that there, there, that's the right of way that was given. It's not the right of way that's being used currently okay. going through that property. Oh. Uh -huh. So yeah, this is sort of interesting. Um, yeah. I, I don't think it's really that big a deal. You know, and that's kind of what we're looking at. Is it takes about a half an acre to do 250. Megawatts. And if you take a look at this, the town, all the town buildings, less the school, 72, 73 kilowatts, and it costs 17,000. Of which that, if you look at the expenditures, town hall and the town hall annex is very low, garage is low, 
Transfer stations low, street lights, seven thousand dollars. That's something as well that I think we need to get get our arms around to try and get new lights to reduce them. But if you look at the Conway Grammar School, we're using eighty percent of the electricity that we're paying for. So in looking at this, we thought this is a way to be able to uh, provide a cost uh, cost solution for um, the electric needs of this town to help reduce the budgets. Right, so you looked into putting the solar panels on the school. Yep, we did. And Not a good idea. Well, okay. it can be done, but you've got a lot of different angles. You've got to deal with your uh, your structural analysis, and it's by far easier just lay them out in, in, in that field. Mm -hmm. And it's really curious, and so that's the solar shading. So we really uh, don't have to cut anything at all except the few trees that are right in the center of that. And as you can see, that can be moved um, north or, or, or east. And this might be the way we'll get, keep it maintained. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> we're going to rent goats? What? We're going to rent goats? You know, we're, we're, we're going to lease that sheep. land. We're going to lease no, it. Those are sheep. Okay. Here you go. We're going to lease the place to grazing. Two, two, two ways that, that were proposed, that the, the two models of, of doing this that, that are workable is one is that the town essentially springs for money and builds this thing and uh, operates it either through uh, a management agreement with another firm and we keep the proceeds. We get the SREX, we get the, the electricity. The second way is for an outside vendor to essentially come in and build this. They'll give us a preferential rate and they will lease the property, at which point we will be getting a lease payment <coughs> if we afford this. We don't get the, the SREX, we don't get the, what we do is get, and this is essentially the, the formula that I believe Greenfield has put in for Question. one of their fields. Does the power go into the grid or does it go directly? To light things. There's a net well, uh, it's a very interesting question. There's a, there are two ways of doing it. One of the suggestions was since the school takes by far the largest amount, 200 uh, kilowatts, is have that directly wired into behind your meter. So it's not on the grid; it just goes right there, um, and that takes care of the majority of the town's load. And it seems to be one of the easiest. That's things. good in an emergency too, right? There's could no power in town, you have power there, right? So what happens to the power that's being generated all summer when the school isn't in use? Well, it, 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 it runs, 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 runs into the grid and you're looking at net metering? Yes. Okay. Runs through their and then yeah. into the grid. Yeah, but there are a lot of legal things that are not yet solved and the state has to declare itself on somehow by January, February, et cetera. So we're doing all the planning that can be done until the legal environment becomes clear. At, at this point in time, municipal projects get full 100% net meter credits. So as far as covering the town, we're going to be getting dollar for dollar exchange. Now the other thing considering is taking this a little further is we're only taking up half an acre. Mm -hmm. And if there's a larger site, the town possibly could be generating um, surplus electricity to sell to the grid at a net metering rate, which would end up being a plus for the uh, for the town coffers, which is what some towns in the uh, Commonwealth are doing right now. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but. Um, it seemed that um, at town meeting, everyone was really taken by surprise. I thought it was worth going through this process to showing you exactly what we're looking to do. Are you looking at other sites? Well, what we're looking at is the, two, the sites that are, that are town property because the minute we go and try and buy property for this thing, it, it skews the, you know, the payback all of a sudden keeps getting pushed further and further out. And the amount of money you've got to put up front to do this makes it less attractive for the community to do it as a community. Um, anybody that's got a spare chunk of property someplace and you want to you want to give it into solar, we can get you in touch with some vendors that will probably be happy to come up and put a field on your property. But I, I want to continue conversation, but I want to recognize that we're a little behind schedule. 
and um, there's snacks to be had. And the point of this time, the point of this time is to ruminate. Ruminate on some snacks. Ruminate on this. What a five minute break? A ten minute break? How long do we want? And then we're gonna come back and talk. Five minutes. Five minutes. Hydrate. 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 Thank you for your time. Hydrate. 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 Well done. Thank you for your work on that. A lot of work. David, we've got all this right now. I have Sue's been typing. I've shown everybody else. Sue's typing. You're taking it. You're just managing. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay
it's in the D set. Um, right in here. For just for a start. We started for the tour. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, right. right. They want to get in here. 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 I call them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the development rights. One instance was uh, actually with a gas pipeline down in the eastern part of the state going under an orchard. And they had put the land into APR a number of years ago and it became very economically feasible for them to allow a pipeline to go under the orchard so they had to buy back the development rights for that portion. Um, but the boat and money. Yes. I wonder what happens if you're trying to use it for a municipal purpose, like let's say a leach. If it's in APR, it's primary, there has to be an agricultural use. Well, but if you take it out, like for a community leaching field? In APR, you cannot take it out of an APR. That's a, that's a, a state, that's a permanent agricultural restriction. I thought it took a two-thirds vote to take it out in our mindset. Well, that's something that we haven't... I had talked to yeah, the legislature. Steve Cooley. He said, Yes, the legislature. Two thirds votes of the two legislature. They do a number of parcels every year, but it's usually very small and not controversial. And we haven't even noticed it. <coughs> We're hoping that we can find parcels that don't require us yeah. to take farmland or. So, what would be the. Restricted land. The, so, the GIS layers that would be useful for us to know about are the. There seems like the sort of go towards and the no go. Is that right? Well, there are the one layer is going to be taxable versus exempt, which is simply informational. Just because something is exempt doesn't mean it can't become used for another purpose. It just means that the person who owns it right now qualifies for no tax status. Okay. So, for example, if the Audubon, not Massachusetts Audubon, for some reason disbanded and decided to sell that land. It could be purchased by a private owner and then come back into taxation and so forth, unless there's a permanent restriction on it. Um, that's one of the layers. Another layer is, does it have a permanent restriction or not? And that's going to give us a quick look at what land is just plain out of bounds. Right, what if the out of bounds would be the Permanent it, restriction would be wetlands? It would be, well, that there is a wetlands layer. It would be probably the 200 feet within 200 feet of a river, you know, the land impacted by the Rivers Act. It would be anything with a permanent restriction on it, use restriction. It would be anything, well, Joe wanted to get into extraordinary topography. You know, if it's ledge, slope? vertical, mm -hmm. Right, we live in Conway, this swamp, there's ledge. Extremely high development costs. Right, right. So those would be impossibilities. Um, the, um, and then we'd have, we have, we're planning, I have a layer half made that's the temporary restrictions, which include chapter classification, which may include termed deed restrictions, private deed restrictions. Uh, one of the developers back in the 70s, Timo Realty, who did a lot of development in town, put a 30-year cap on all of their lots that they could only move one house for 30 years, even if the lot was 10 acres. So that's now running out. So this possibility of looking at some of that land for more residential development or open space or whatever. But if that's a good place to put a house and a better place over here, is a better place to save for conservation or for open space, then we can think about Swapping. switching or changing our zoning or whatever. The ball field here is, you know, partly flat and it's in the center of town, but it was given to the town with the restriction that it be used for public recreation. Things are, some things are tied up that way. So would it be possible to generate from these different layers, we could get the specific layers, but then I sort of had this image of a map where all the things that are yep. no-go land yep. would be blocked out, and what we have left is the mm -hmm. possible land. Yes. That's exactly what these That's what we're yeah, doing, that's, and, that's and, what I mean and they'll be, you know, and you'll be able to say, okay, here's the no-go land. These are all in, in black or whatever, <laughs> uh, because they're absolutely out of bounds for any reason. You know, the permanent no-go land. Right, the beaver pond on Whateley Road, uh, the Conway Pool, these, all these places. Then you'll be able to pull over another layer that tells who owns it. Perhaps, if it's state, town-owned, privately-owned, whatever, if it's part of the watersheds. 
Um, then the, you can add another layer to see if there's a temporary restriction on it. Something like that. And for example, this is all industrial up here, you know, where the high tension line goes. Um, when TransCanada, when, when US Genco renewed their FERC license in 1998, they had to put a permanent conservation restriction on all the land they own along the river. Plus we have industrial land here with the railroad. So there are a number of places that have complications or, or limits as to what can be done, and that's what's going on in these maps. Yep, and I'm going to try and do it in as simple a layer as possible, so you pull over one layer that tells you one thing and add it to the others, rather than making a very complex one where we have kind of eight layers of information here at once. But then, but then it could be once, you know, we could like pull out the separate layer, sure. but then we could also have the, like, all, all the permanent mm -hmm. no-goes. It's together. as if you're working with clear plastic. So you can see right up through each layer. And Over you can layers. pick and choose the ones you want to build your information. Lee, does this have town on my this one? No. It does not distinguish between, we have town, we have state, there's uh, no county owned land anymore except a few of the roads, but those are mostly rights of way. Uh, we do have South Deerfield Watershed District, we have Northampton Watershed, and those take up substantial areas. Yep. And they're always growing. Are they? Oh yes. They're, the South Deerfield has been actively buying up more. They're being encouraged by the state to buy more of the feeder streams and the areas that support the feeder streams. In addition to where the brooks have been, now they're being urged to push out further in order to protect their water supplies. Yep. And we're, getting zero Ruth, taxes for Ruth that, right? we're getting zero taxes for that. There is a pilot plan, but it's, yeah. Ruth has a question. Lee, in terms of your project to look at farmland mm -hmm. and um, what we have now and what can be reclaimed, there used to be, and probably still exists, a map layer for GIS that is uh, various classifications, the state classifications of the quality of farmland. Oh, the soil survey. The soil survey, yes. yes. And I so, seen that as a GIS layer yet. Well, you, I'm, I would We're think it would be, yeah. yeah. Great. Because you can use it for your project yes. to target lands, which th can then be put on the map of things that we'd rather not use. We use the survey soil uh, soil survey book a great deal of the time, yep. and that also is very clear about what lands are suitable for septic and perking. Yes. You know, if you start getting out here, and it's very clear because it will take a, an area the size of a, a card table and, and the one next door, and, the, and they may be different. And one may be more suitable, and the one isn't here, or you're, you can see a, a change in you know, so that you know if you move a little to the east, you're going to be in a better situation. We're going to have a checkerboard septic. Oh, system. my golly. <laughs> but there's, there's tons of information out there. Okay. It's a ton matter of time getting it into a readily usable situation. Okay. What about, let's, let's look at this. So this, this, we're going to be getting more information about land that could mm -hmm. be possible for these things. Yep. So... What conversations were you having about what things could go together, what things, you know, what might be some combo? I mean, we heard from solar the idea of the town owned land behind the school could have school related stuff and solar related stuff and highway stuff. What other. Has, has anybody looked into the uh, consideration that the ex Rose property of our river? Yeah. Probably. He's got enough space to put public safety and housing for the elderly. Well, the big problem is wetlands. When we had I Emily Stockman look over the whole 10 acres, the amount of land to build on is so finite. That's the biggest problem with that piece Has of that land. Has that been broke down in the acreage as to what's available? So we've got a picture of it, yeah. It's about what two and a half acres is available out of the whole thing. There's no there's even that. Not even. It's a funny lot. There's setbacks and there's that one triangle of land that comes out. The Dilap triangle. Mm -hmm. So that kind of. 
Well, you, you, you just said public safety. Is that what you're so you're talking ambulance? Right, Fire right. and police. Okay. Mm -hmm. And senior housing on the same lot. Yeah, I, my recollection from looking at that, I don't think that there's enough land to do that. But suppose that there's enough room then for ambulance and police if we were to change the design of the buildings. Where, where we ended up putting that footprint was we gave the whole piece of land to Berkshire Design and said, where could you possibly put anything? And it's just really that little footprint, whether it's for us or for anybody else, I think that's the only spot for building. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Well, that's the one I showed you when you came over my house. If the town does there. get built, what's the practicality? I mean, there's been a lot of talk taking over the existing building for just emergency really, you've stuff. Got, you've got to realize that, that site up there, that town owned piece of property right now, has no septic and no water. So that would be an issue. Where does now, what is the, water uh, go? The, the town probably has a septic tank on it, and they use the Fireman's Relief Association's leach field. Wow. Because there's no room for leach field on that property. And, and there, there had been. The water is placed across the street from the, Orchard Foot as well. You know what? The, 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 the Fireman's building, and should be the Fireman's building, and the highway garage free water. All right. The Conway School had done a design combining the, the auxiliary building and the town garage mm -hmm. building when I was looking at moving the town garage mm -hmm. some years ago. And at that point, it looked like this is what we can do with that building by combining those two and turning it into the safety complex. I don't think ever saw um, they're there, I'm sure they're in a closet in some place, some of these things. I, I remember that. I think yeah. that happened when I was on the board. This was like 84, 85. This um, was, no, I think it was after that. Um, but that's the... Um, Back when they were talking about putting the town garage up across from Fred and Jean's place. The unfortunate thing right now with that building the way it sits for emergency services for fire and ambulance is you've literally got to drive out into the lane of traffic before you start turning mm -hmm. to get out of the building. Well, that's that's why they make streetlights. <laughs> wasn't the talk that Orchard Equipment was going to try to help out? That was years ago, they both tried and they got shot down. I thought it was more recent. Uh, back when Norm French built the green building that's across the street from the brick building. The warehouse. He, uh, the warehouse. <coughs> he offered to put a four bay fire station on the very front of it, facing the street. Free of charge to the town of Commerce. All he asked was that building be tax exempt from that point on. The store is built only. Be tax exempt, and they blew it full of holes and about chased them out of town, made for it. Can it be that, a you think that would have alleviated the problem for highway and fire and ambulance forever? Is it possible to revisit that? It may not be because of the wetland. The, the, the sluice way is, is yeah, a that's wetland. Yeah, that's another Yes. Another world. Which is, which is fairly absurd because it probably dries the bone yeah, right It is. It hasn't been, yeah. been watered in yeah. 50 years. So I mean, I, 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 think, I think we should, I think we should appeal to the, to the state to get that designated differently. There are other wetlands on that site, uh, not just the canal. So I have a question. Normally, from the school showed up. How serious is a school expansion? Okay. I would they say, yeah, the demographics and the population <laughs> shifts. Right the population shifts down in the grand There isn't any school system out here that's gaining students. Everybody's threat. shrinking. Um, Can we convert and the back end of the school into senior housing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. I said, no. We are waiting for this report that we paid for, the town uh -huh. meeting for, that the university of Mass was doing for all of the the uh, school districts, mm -hmm. for the Frontier School District, including Conway Grammar, to see what space is going to be coming available in the next few years and what your options are doing with it, mm -hmm. if any. We haven't seen that report yet. Put a couple of offices back there. You could put town offices back there. You could put a, a garage up and have the ambulance and, you know, somebody based out of there. So that's possibility. So so we have seven minutes before we turn into pumpkin um, or melt, whichever one. Yeah, Mary, one of the things I would hope we also could think about is at what point do we as this group or planning board ask 
landowners, would they consider the donation or fair market value of some of these places only need two acres, some only need a half an acre. Do we, have we done enough of that? Asking the public to take a look at what they own. If they knew what was involved, not as extensively as this, but if there was some way of attracting mm -hmm. landowners right. to say, hey look, I've got this acre, you know, it's down near the center of town or it's convenient for one of these purposes. I'd like to see us do that as well. So this, what this segues, segues us into wonderfully is the next step. Okay. And, next, and so that would be a question, um, like one of the next, so one next step thinking is, what, you know, compiling this information, sharing it amongst ourselves, and then some kind of public conversation about it, that's sort of presenting to the public in a tidier format perhaps. Um, here's, you know, here's what we've identified as concerns, and that part of that could be, um, here's our wish list, and you know, those of you who have land that you know think about that could be part of it. So one is, so one of the next steps is compile and share amongst ourselves, but then a some kind of public info session that is both giving information um, and also planting seeds of ideas of, you know, people sharing their land somehow. Is there? Yeah, so looks like it adds up to less than 30 acres. It's not 21, 21 and a half. 21 and a half. <laughs> I, I used a higher number, but. Yeah. Yeah. So Pixie and then. And then yeah, the I just, and then quickly, which is, what strikes me, if we found this 30 acres of flat land, like, I would say I go down to Waitley and go, oh God, it's so enviable. They could do whatever they want down there. I don't see that any of these are mutually exclusive of each other. That might be a bigger question to ask. Do, do people see they couldn't possibly put this next to this? They all look like they could survive together, survive together uh, if we had the ideal piece of land. Um, and I think that's an important thing for us to walk away with. Um, back in the 80s, and I admit I wasn't paying a lot of attention to this, but we went through the same process to find land for the grammar school. Mm -hmm. And and Joe, I don't know, were you a selectman back then? You know, I don't I don't know how long ago you were, but but somehow we so we just you know somebody approached the Fourniers and said we really need some land, and I don't know how many other people were approached, but this feels like it's what happened then in this huge search that the town did. Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers how that happened. Yes, I was involved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, I and I actually went back on my knees two or three times. <laughs> Finally, it worked. <laughs> sure. but it came up early, and then we, and they said no, and then you know we turned along, and we ultimately went back for the better off. Yeah. Yeah. I have a concern that I just would like to bring up here. This process, there's no way to. It, it has to be uh, time-consuming and cumbersome to get to the point where we identify which pieces of land are suitable or most suitable, are available and most suitable for the various you know, uses we're talking about here. And while we're doing that, it would seem that all of these projects, uh, unless we identify some of their priorities, are really on hold. Now, how long is this going to take? There's, there's no reason in the world the solar, you know, the solar array, if that Unless we, we can all, anybody can come up with any objections, why that shouldn't proceed quickly, as soon as it can possibly happen. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at some of the other needs, we're talking about the ambulance, you know, we're saying this should have happened three or five years ago. It would seem to me that we might need, we maybe should prioritize, you know, some of these projects and just say, you know, we just really need to go like hell and make this happen because this could really put everything on. And that's not the goal here, right? I mean, no, we're not. We're, no, I mean, not. we're goal, clear that that's not the goal. The goal for tonight is not prioritizing. Right, the next steps could involve that. And it could also, it, part of it is, it's, you know, we have in this meeting, that doesn't mean that solar or senior housing or parks or somebody aren't going to go on with their process of pursuing what they're doing. It's wanting to have this mindset too. So for example, if solar 
goes ahead and tries to work with the property that was, you know, identified behind the school to be having in mind the, you know, how would the septic work, how could highway garage work, how could potentially senior housing work, how could a park work, whatever it was, other uses. It's, it's like when the salt shed got built, and I kept asking at town meeting when can we have a master plan for the Fournier property, um, and that it, you know, don't build something and then a few years later go, damn, if we had just built it 20 feet over that way, we could have at, put this in here. So that's part of this, is to, to try and avoid that. I think it was also about seeing if there's any synergy. If, if senior housing finds a 20 acre parcel, right. they can say, gee, there's four other people that we can share this. Absolutely. And maybe then the town will consider buying that one. Yeah. I was thinking that rather than to try to slow us down, maybe it would speed us up. No, I don't, no, I, I think, um, so I, I guess what I'm really saying is that as far as senior housing is concerned, we cannot go forward. We can't move. We can't do anything until we know whether or not this is the best, until there's an agreement, some consensus, that this is the best use for that piece of property and that, you know, we would have support going to town meeting. Now, if that's the case for the ambulance or for the fire department, the police department, if they're in the same boat, we sh shouldn't let that happen because how long is it going to take us to get to that point? This is why I was asking about the this is why I was asking about the wastewater issue. Yeah. You know, some of these it, these are real priorities, and we and I'm not sure senior housing is one. I, I happen to be part of th that group, but you know, if the ambulance or the fire department or whatever, um, it seems to me that maybe we should focus simultaneously finding what land is available and so on, but focus on some of these mm -hmm. priorities. That's my suggestion. Bob, did it cost us extra to get a, a fire truck that can yes, fit did. into the garage? Mm -hmm. We had to pay more money estimated, to get a shorter oh, truck. So you estimated 35000 Yeah. So some of these Ball things package. are costing us money in all kinds of bizarre ways. But the other thing is, is that time meeting that was brought up, 35000 yep. cheaper than building in the building. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of mindset that you would have to address. I think one of the things I think that's good about this also too is that we can now all be advocates for each other's projects. I mean, when I was at town meeting and I was going ahead, I was prepared to vote for that solar project. And then when there was objections to come up, I didn't know enough about it to be able to, def to say anything. Now I know if somebody stops me on the street or before town meeting, I can talk more intelligently about the impact of that and that these things have been considered. So I think there's good value here. I also hear, you know, I'm surprised to hear about the ambulance. I'm, I'm sorry that you have to go through that every year with the state. <laughs> well, my, my own personal feelings on the solar is what they, this, this plan they just short flight is a good plan, I think, because to take it into consideration, expansion of the Grand Foot, they had to take place in the room for Leachfield. But my consensus, were, and this is only Robert Baker's figure, would be to try to keep it back as far as you can. Right, well, we so saw that the one friend space towards the show. We do have some wiggle room on that site, but it's, and, and, again, and, we we had to focus on a site with the consultants that we had and give them something that we could say, this is, and because we've done enough work on that already, we'll push them there. But there certainly are, I mean, you'll, you could drive around here, find a, a half acre or even an acre of land that's got good exposure is around. And whether you can convince somebody to say, look, you know, you got 50 acres, we have a corner. You know, and what would you charge us for this? Yeah. If, if it's if it's reasonable, it's not going to be a hard push to get now to, to try and do this. But if people want, you know, house lot properties for a chunk of, you know, field, that's going to be more difficult to accomplish. Bruce, and then Andy, and we're two minutes past pumpkin at this point. Next, <laughs> under next steps, I would suggest that we have enough information here, aside from any costs of land, is to put some dollars on all of these build-outs. Because then, it, it, um, in terms of town meeting, you can make some realistic requests and people know what's coming along and how this fits in and whether we're spending all the money on one thing when we've got a dozen other things coming along. I think we also invited long-range capital planning to take it. Because we actually have the, the 
yeah. another group in town. Right? We, we were thinking that we would try and determine the land use and then give it to them, mm -hmm. and they would put the numbers on it. But I guess we could try and do it in the planning. Room. No, do you know how the long range good. planning, uh, capital planning is doing? I don't think they've met in the last eight months. No, well, they have something no, to meet about. Maybe we can ask them to put prices on these. <laughs> Andy, did you do it? Yeah, I think that's a good idea to ask them to actually do something so we don't have to do it. But you were talking about synergy before. And for example, if you still had to use that building that you're using now and you don't have a septic and everything right now, what, why couldn't that be part of the town's septic system? Mm -hmm. That you propose. Too close to the river. Too close, Phil? Really? Yeah, there's the river banks right there. Uh, I think Peter mentioned one. I, I recall that we said we should tear all that down and make a town park. Oh. <laughs> that was the third, <laughs> right, third <laughs> town park. Just to clean that whole site out. It's meant moving everything off that site. And just but certainly look for you. Make it into a park. You know? But if Get we some brownfield money to clean it up. Yeah. If, um, in terms of next steps, should we think about having a person from each of these committees meet and have like an ad hoc to continue this conversation? <coughs> we were thinking of a second meeting. I don't know if we thought about who should be there or we could, I guess we could do it as a... You mean before, working, a, public, a, group, before right? a public conversation? Well, the sort of, the sort of di the, like all the groups go back and digest a bit? Mm -hmm. And then have a maybe we can have a planning like a session at the planning board mm -hmm. that was representative. One of the things we haven't done still is just maybe some crazy brainstorming where we say, How about if we put this next to this? And there might be that kind of activity, whether we do this as the same group or not. But I think we, we're on the verge of, of making some interesting combinations, perhaps, um, even given the, the little end that we know about. So oh, and Lee's uh, maps with mm -hmm. overlays would be key, be and they're, they'll be available. I hope to be there. I hope it'll be yeah, within a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so the, a so a, a fall before so before a public information session. Yeah, definitely this is one, and then public information that is after that. I think so. And mm -hmm. and so the the homework assignment besides taking a lot of snacks is to go back to our individual groups and think and digest and have some like start notes of brainstorm and then planning board will call a meeting of representatives is that right Does that sound yes sound good cool cool Wow, we are, we are fabulous. It's hot. And so we, we want to thank FCAT. They came and filmed this. Thank you. They just felt this was a really worth, worthwhile meeting to get recorded. And your name is? Dan. And thank Dan, you. thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. And, and snacks. And we had snacks. Yeah. Take your take-home bag. Your take-home bag.